Uh, without further ado, let's introduce uh, Julius Krumbikel. So the floor is yours. Thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming to my talk about summary tables JL, which makes publication ready tables in docx, HTML, LaTeX, and types. Yeah, I'm Julius, a product engineer at Pumas AI, which you can check out at pumas.ai. And this QR code you probably saw from a couple of minutes <laughs> if you want to check out the slides on your own. Uh, so, brief outline what I'm going to talk about. Uh, why did we make this, ta uh, this package in the first place? Then I'm going to show some examples of predefined table functions we have in the package and how you can make custom tables. And then a brief look at a companion package called uh, writedocx, uh, write JL, which we also open sourced, um, which is one of the backend packages for summary tables. Yeah, why did we make it in the first place? So at Pumas AI, which is a, uh, or partly does uh, consulting for pharmaceutical companies, um, a lot of tables have to be generated for reports, analyses, and so on. So uh, we needed a good tool for that, but we had certain requirements um, how those tables need to look. Um, one big one is that we need to merge cells, which uh, in the common format of just having a matrix-like table isn't supported. If you uh, know pretty tables JL, it doesn't do merged cells, for example. Um, and then we needed a bunch of output formats, like a uh, HTML, LaTeX, DocX, and types, um, but with very specific formatting requirements. So if you use a converter tool like Pandoc or so, you, uh, it's harder to get to the exact output that you want. It's nicer if you control the output exactly. So uh, we wanted to have our own. And we uh, have no ASC, uh, ASCII output because it's hard to do with merged cells, but we don't really need it that much. Um, and then, yeah, we wanted to have this opinionated style, which you might be familiar from LaTeX tables like book tabs. I mean, it's pretty classic, this minimalistic style without vertical lines. And that's sometimes hard to do also in, for example, in, in DocX, that's not so easy to achieve. <laughs> um, right, so some examples uh, what tables look like. Um, we have the, the, the one table is called table one, which is a typical table to summarize uh, columns from a data set. And here you can see some features, for example, um, different variables like age, or blood type, or whether someone is a smoker being listed in the rows, um, split out with different analyses, like different summary functions. And then you can um, also split, uh, stratify by other categorical variables. And it does some summaries there, how many uh, people you have in each group and so on. And you can see that the table is not like completely standard. There are some indents going on, some merged um, headers. Um, yeah, that's one example. The other is called a listing table, which also has an unusual bit of an unusual layout uh, because you're presenting raw data from like pharmaceutical trials, um, which you list uh, inter interleaved with summaries that you do per group. Um, and there's also a convenience interface for that. Um, I'm not going into detail further because I think not many people here <laughs> might be interested in exactly these functions, but more like in the custom functionality. So that's coming next. I'm going to show just briefly how to do one of these custom tables so you see a bit what the interface is like. So this is the example table, which um, is like fake data that I made up about trees <laughs> of two different kinds. Um, and let's see how you, how you would uh, build that in this package. So we start with just the vector of strings for the uh, column labels and put that in a, uh, in a matrix, basically. You can see that it's, uh, there's this little apostrophe for making it into a, into a row vector, right? And then call table on it, on this matrix, and then, yeah, that's the first part. Um, then we can, for these uh, cells that we, we wrap the cell type around uh, the values that we actually want to show, um, and we can give that some options. So here I give it bold, true, and a border. The border can't be seen because it <laughs> coincides with the table border, but in the next slide you can see that the deciduous and evergreen, they have these little uh, borders on top. And then the next thing is the, the species, which again is just a vector of strings wrap, wrapped in the cell. And we can concatenate that in, the, in this matrix, um, uh, like the classic thing that you would also do with numbers. I mean, everybody's familiar with that. Um, the next thing is some fake data. In this uh, case, just again a matrix of strings. You could also uh, use numbers, and there's some more convenience in uh, in summary tables, how to handle rounding, for example, how exactly you want to display these numbers. Um, yeah, you can check, the, check out the docs for that. There's a bunch of options. Um, again, we just vcat that into the, into the table, and now we have already uh, this one. And then the next step, um, we want to actually merge the column headers. So we 
Is this not working? Oh, yeah, no. So we pass uh, the merge true keyword to the cells that um, relate to the column headers, and then it will just merge all the ones that are exactly the same next to each other. So that's a pretty simple way to do this, I think. Um, then you already get the pretty close. The next, well, <laughs> this thing <laughs> goes a bit back and forth. Uh, yeah, it jumped, I think, over the, it jumped over the labels that I added um, and already jumped to the annotation. Uh, you can see it highlighted the water consumption thing, which uses one of the internal types of summary tables, which um, when, you, when you pass that, it will automatically do like an, a footnote with the numbering and so on and put that in the, in the bottom there. And then the last step was uh, passing header two to the table, um, and then you get the additional line because, um, I mean, in most of the table packages that assume you have a data frame-like thing, it, it, doesn't, it would usually just give you the names and then the header line, but a lot of formats th are not really built like that, so here it's completely flexible. You can do it however you want. Same with the footer, which I don't demonstrate here. Uh, yeah, and then let's take a brief look at the write docx package, which is the other one that we uh, open sourced. It writes docx packages with uh, docx files, which are like zipped XML files um, in the back. And it has types that are very close to the original schema that uh, Microsoft uh, uh, published for, for this. Um, but it, there's some convenience sprinkled in. Uh, so you can, uh, so it's more easily, a little bit more Julian. But you can do basically anything that the schema allows you to do. And then, uh, yeah, it's verbose, but more powerful than going through a converter, as I said before. Um, you can't currently read into Julia data structures because there are so many tags that <laughs> I didn't have <laughs> the time to, to make the Julia structures for all of them. Um, but yeah, that's how it looks. Uh, here I'm actually pasting one of those tables in, and I don't know, uh, I've, I haven't seen uh, Word tables look like that before because I think you cannot manually do this in Word, <laughs> but if you do it programmatically, you can, <laughs> like with this gap here and stuff. Uh, yeah, so there's some fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I wanted to mention that you can, in principle, splice XML output uh, into existing doc files that you get out of write docx. Um, so it could be pretty flexible to enhance like some workflows where you already have docx files, but you want to change tables and so on. But uh, yeah, we haven't published anything about that yet. But in principle, it's possible uh, without reading into Julia data structures first. You just modify the existing file with the output you get. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Thanks uh, for showing your uh, your package. Uh, I was wondering, we have a, a PowerPoint package which we open sourced, and I was wondering whether you know if there's like a commonality in the in the XMLs between DocX and PPTX. Yeah, I mean they all follow the same basic um, the basic. So format. we could write a common backend that uses both, I guess. Yes, then. I briefly checked the PPTX um, package once. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it has some similarities. It's not directly the same, but uh, yeah, that okay. could be yeah, cool. very possible. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, all right. Thank once you so again, much. thank you. <laughs>